Welcome to the second edition of the And Away They Joe show. Hello, hello. That hello, hello is a nod to Bob Worley, who is the track announcer for Sky Racing World in Japan. And in Kawasaki Racecourse, there's a lead pony that comes out and waves to the camera. And when Bob is introducing all the horses, they they go to her first and she's waving to the camera. So he always says, hello, hello. So I'm going to, sorry, Bob, I'm going to take that from you for, for this show. Thank you so much for joining me today. Later on in the program, we're going to have Melanie Martinez. She is a horse racing photographer for Twin Spires, Racing Dudes, and Horse Racing Nation. A little bit about last week when I was talking about the Yasuda Kanin and Almanine. It was just so crazy. I, I thought she was going to pull it off, but she was so far back. And, and nothing against the winner, who was Gran Allegria. But I, I really thought this was going to be Almanine's race. And Indy Champ was in there too, so it was like pretty much the top three favorites. So Gran Allegria... Indy Champ and Almanai. So, if you had the trifecta, it would have been a pretty good trifecta if you had it. And and also last week, of course, I didn't mention Honor AP in the podcast, and he wins. But you know when you're so focused on one horse, which was authentic in the way he's run, and and I should have had Honor AP, so. It's just you get so focused on somebody's accomplishments or somebody or some horse's accomplishments that sometimes you overlook something. And I don't know why I overlook that horse, but you know it, it happens. Even when you're betting, it happens. It happens when you overlook something. It's like when you're looking at the form, and then you see that a certain like a big long shot wins, and then you see something in the form after you're done looking at it, and you're like, oh my god, why didn't I see that before? And, you know, that, that's just the way it goes sometimes. But we are going to have, well, for, for me, it's going to be the San Francisco Mile for this week in the, um, the next stake race, big stake race that's coming up. Entries aren't drawn yet. That will be on Thursday. So we will have a preview of the San Francisco Mile this Friday. So be sure to check that out. And we had a little scheduling issue with Bailey Gallison, who was supposed to be on this week, and that was kind of my fault. So today we're going to have somebody else that's going to be Melanie Martinez, who will be next, coming up in this next segment. Joining me on the podcast today, we have Melanie Martinez. She's a horse racing photographer for Twin Spires Racing Dudes and Horse Racing Nation. You could also follow her on Twitter with her wonderful pictures at mm-hmm. Skim the Rail. Melanie, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you, Joe? Um, it's hot. I'm in the closet recording this. <laughs> <laughs> I, ho- I hope you're. I hope you're cool over there. But you're in Vegas, though, so it's probably I am. hot, right? Um, you know, Vegas was starting to get warm. It was starting to hit the hundreds, and for some reason, this week, it dropped down into the 70s. So it's been really nice. I'm enjoying it because next week I was looking on my phone as far as the forecast, it's going to start hitting the hundreds. So um, it summer is here. So it's kind of like up and down. So it's kind of weird. Oh, yeah. It's it's getting hot. It's it's getting kind of weird. slowly getting there. And hopefully the virus is, is already slowly going away. But I don't think so. Uh, do you have a yeah. lot of toilet paper? <laughs> you know you know toilet paper that was one thing that was in short supply but um luckily now you know you can find toilet paper you can find hand sanitizers at the grocery stores and elsewhere but the one thing you can't find is Clorox wipes and I need Clorox wipes for work and I cannot find any so if anybody out there is from Las Vegas that knows where I can find Clorox wipes, uh, direct message me on Twitter. Direct message yeah. her on Twitter, so that way you could you could help her sanitize the camera. <laughs> oh my uh, god, so, it's for so, it's for work actually. 
Oh, it's for hard. work, for yeah, work. For oh, work. okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that too, because that's with a lot of people. So, Melanie, uh, what oh, made yeah. you decide to become a horse racing photographer? Um. Well, that's a that's a good question. Um, you know, I don't, I don't come from a background in the industry, and I didn't grow up with the sport. You know, because I my my fellow photographers, a lot of them has you know, they have family that took them to the track when they're little or their family is in the sport. And, um, I actually, in 2009, that was the year that I actually became a horse racing fan. And, um, and you know how it is. Once you get the bug, it's like, there's no looking back. It's like, it's like your life has changed once horse racing gets into your life. And so I started, um, just betting the ponies and and actually what had happened was a friend of mine was talking about horse racing and talking about um uh, do you remember the series jockeys yeah yeah with yeah. Uh, mike smith and Chantel yeah sutherland yeah so and i remember there was one episode and zanyata was on and you know he was talking about zanyata about this great horse and i'm like who is zanyata <laughs> you know, I just know Zenyatta from the group Police and uh, the musical, you know. Um, but anyway, so I actually got into the sport first before photography. And my first visit to the racetrack was the 2009 Breeders' Cup. And, you know, that is life changing when Zenyatta won and... Um, it was just incredible. Yeah. So just looking at the photos that I had taken, I just brought my point and shoot camera and it was, um, I, I don't, you know, I, everything is self-taught. So I never went to school for learning anything about photography. So obviously my first photos were like blurry out of focus and all of that, but I was just, really intrigued by it all so that's pretty much how I started it I just thought they were so beautiful you know these amazing animals they're just athletes and just how they move they're so graceful and I was hooked <laughs> so when yeah you didn't hooked. you self self self-taught yourself so it's like you had yeah. the natural talent for it you had the eye of capturing the moment within all the pictures that I've seen already on, on Twitter, <laughs> what was your first horse that you had to take a picture of? Or what was your first horse that you took a picture of that got you into photography right then and there? Yeah. So I think my first photo, you know, I had my point and shoot, like I was saying, I was, it was 2009 Breeders Cup and it was, uh, I always remember it cause I still have that picture up and it's, um, she be wild. It was a 2009, uh, Breeders Cup, um, juvenile Philly, Phillies, and uh, it was a shot of her crossing the line, beautician, and blind luck, who came in third. And yeah, that was pretty much my first shot. She be wild. And you got to travel all over the world to take all these pictures, and you got to go to like the Kentucky Derby, the Breeders' Cup, Dubai World Cup, Woodbine yeah. Mile. Uh, within those big days that you have to do those kind of pictures like it's yeah. totally different from from being a spectator tell us what it's like to be a photographer on those big days that you're taking pictures yeah wow it's um it's it's can be chaos um it's the photo room where all the photographers are at you know they try to get us as close to the track as possible but um you know, it's lots of preparation involved because you want to get to the track early. You want to set up your laptop, you know, your card reader, all of that stuff. Because once photographers start getting in, it's, it's just so busy and um, lots of prepping involved. You know, once you get set up, looking at the race day card mm -hmm. to, to kind of, you know, um, plan your day you know what's running on the dirt what's running on the turf and uh so it's just being organized you know as far as um being a horse racing photographer on big racing days uh you yeah wanna... you gotta have a lot of all that 
you have to have it all prepared because you might miss the shot. Oh yeah. And as, and as far as like your, your kind of, if you'd call it workstation, you know, I mean, when you walk in, you see, all you see is a bunch of photographers and, you know, when you get there early, like I said, you set up and you got your laptop out, you got your card readers, you got, you know, chargers out, you got external drives. It's, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's a big day whenever you have those big races. So, yeah, I could, I could imagine. And you had um, a lot of pictures of Justify, who today, as we're recording this, won the Triple Crown, and you were there for that. What, what was I that was. like, being at the Triple Crown, <sighs> wow. witnessing his big win? Yeah, you know, I wasn't there for American Pharaoh. I, I was unable to to be there for the for the Triple Crown, and I know it was exciting because I was out at one of the casinos and I was watching. But being able to um, experience a Triple Crown, you know, that's something that a lot of us – did not even think that we could possibly be so lucky to experience two triple crowns just so close in, uh, in years, but it was, it was incredible. Uh, I mean, the energy is always so exciting and it's really the race fans, right. That, that make everything so great. It's the excitement and the passion that they have. So yeah, it was, it was all over the track that day everyone wore the crowns and and um yeah just being there and documenting um and creating that story in my photos that that was pretty special it's always special we're talking with melanie martinez you could follow her on twitter at skim at skim the rail she's a horse racing photographer for twin spires racing dudes and horse racing nation and I know that you've you've done a lot of traveling to Dubai and, and all that. Is mm -hmm. there a course, race course that you wanted to go to that you never had a chance to? And, and it has to be like absolutely on your bucket list. Oh, yeah. I, <laughs> I actually have many on my bucket list. But, you know, I'd like to make it out to the Ark one year. And um, that would be amazing. And uh, I'd actually like to go to Hong Kong. I, I oh, heard yeah. that the racing there is just amazing. And, you know, Australia, it's, it's like so many, I don't think there's enough. Um, there's not enough time in our lifetimes to do everything that I'd want to do. So. <laughs> and, and I know that you, you prize your pictures a lot and I know that you, you enjoyed every moment. Mm -hmm. Has there ever been, or what, what is your biggest accomplishment you would, you would like to say, that, 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 that's personal to you that you yeah. enjoyed and, and, and helped you out in your career? Um, wow. I, I think it would probably be uh, the 2000. I didn't win the Eclipse Award, but I was one of the runner, runner-ups, honorable mention in the Eclipse Award. So that was um, amazing because, you know, as a photographer, you know, that's something... I mean, every photographer secretly would love to win the Eclipse Award for the best photo of the year. And so that was pretty, pretty neat. I didn't even expect it. But and uh, it was with a photo of California Chrome. And, you know, I'm a big fan of his. I'm a Chromey. So uh, being able to have been like a runner up for the, you know, Eclipse Award in 2017, that was pretty cool. That was cool. And that is your Twitter header, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. So so be sure you guys follow her so you can see that picture. It's actually a really cool picture. <laughs> yeah. He was awesome. He he has such a personality about him, you know, about him. He um when he hears the cameras going, he loves it. And um with photography you know obviously you got to be aware of your surroundings as far as you know um uh, your lighting and your camera but a lot of times it's luck you know like anything and that shot was there was a bunch of us it was so early in the morning it was so dark and um it was the angle because angles are really important as well when you're shooting. So yeah. 
it was um yeah when I saw that photo I was like wow that it, it just shows how majestic he is and and everyone was just looking up at him and you know that's what everybody did with um, um you know California Chrome it's like he was a Cinderella of horse racing so and yeah it's pretty I know cool. that it, in between having to to run up and down the stairs or wherever <laughs> yeah. you have to go to take pictures do you, do you get to make a quick bet um you know if I ever make one it's not between races because once the stakes races, you know, if we're talking big stake racing, you know, like Breeders' Cup, Cal- um, Dubai World Cup, those big races, there's really no time. Once the stake races start, it's back to back. So if I would bet on a race, it would probably be f- before any of those um, stake races start, but you got to get a little bit of action. So, you know, but, you, but, but I, but I know that you're a big handicapper. you also have played the horses too. Is there anything you look for? Do you ever read the form or do you actually look at them on the TV or in the paddock? How do you handicap a race? You know, I'm, um, I'm a numbers person. So, and, and a lot of times it's not all about the numbers and statistics, but I do keep that into mind when I'm handicapping, you know, I'm, I'm looking on the relationship between the trainer and the jockey. I'm looking at if the horses had run at the track, maybe I'm also looking at if he did really bad in his last start, maybe something went wrong. He bubbled out at the gates, you know, something, you know, so there's a lot of things like when I look at the racing forms, um, I take into account, but a lot of times as well, you know, like I think I mentioned to you, um, remember I had talked to you about the Thomas herding technique with the patterns in motion oh, yeah. and stuff. Yeah. So like on big races with like the Kentucky Derby, I do all my handicapping and um, then I use, um, you know, Kerry Thomas's analysis because Again, it's not just about the numbers and statistics that I'm really high on, but it's also understanding like the horse's mental and emotional setup. I mean, it's priceless because he he watches all the videos, you know, of, of them as two year olds and and it's pretty cool. So um yeah, I'm 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 a numbers and statistics person, but a lot of times, you know, it's just a relationship as well between between the trainer and jockey and, and, you know, the horse's pedigree and all of that. So, yeah, I love handicapping. What was your, your biggest bet that you ever won? And what was the biggest bet you ever made? Do you Um, remember those? Oh yeah, of course. I think everybody remembers their biggest win or, uh, or their biggest bet. So um, my biggest bet, Kentucky Derby, that was Orb. I went all in on him and I did a $200 win bet. I love the connection. Wow. And, <laughs> and, and that was a hundred, uh, $1,200 because he was six to one. Um, but, but again, you know, I use, um, I use Carrie's analysis and that really made me go all in. I'm like, I'm all in on orb. <laughs> yeah. $200 <laughs> boom. And, and then my, Probably like my biggest win was probably 2014 Kentucky Derby. You know, that mm-hmm. was California Chrome um, commanding curve and Danza. So, uh, Oh, so those are big. Oh odds yeah. Up, yeah. In the back. Oh my. <laughs> yeah. So I had a $3, I had a $3 trifecta on that. So that was over 5,000. And, um, and then I had like a $50 place bet on commanding curve so that was that was a nice day out of the sports yeah, you book get to, you get to walk yeah you get to walk out with a lot of money and sometimes we don't get to walk out with a lot of money so that's actually really good we're talking with melanie martinez you can follow her on twitter it's <laughs> skim the rail and she is also a horse racing photographer for twin spires racing dudes and horse racing nation just a couple more minutes with you do you have a funny story that you've Wherever you've traveled, Woodbine, Dubai, any any of those places, was there ever something that funny that happened to you during the trip? <laughs> I I always I always t- 
talk about this story because I think it's pretty funny. So um, I was actually on my way to Dubai for the 2017 Dubai World Cup. And um, it was a 16-hour nonstop flight out of LAX. So, you know, everybody's asleep on the plane. It's like, it's like a long, super long flight. And so I wake up out of deep sleep and, you know, I look around, everybody's sleeping. I'm kind of groggy and stuff. And then I'm, I'm, I'm like in the front of the plane and the bulkhead and there's nobody next to me, which was awesome. And I wake up and then this guy walks th- down the aisle and I immediately recognize his white hair. <laughs> and you know who I'm talking about when I say white hair, right? Yeah. <laughs> Bob Baffert. It was Bob Baffert. And, and, um, and you know, he hadn't been back to Dubai since 2012, you know, since his heart attack. So here I am waking up in the middle of the sleep, my sleep and who, you know, who walks, you know, strolls through the plane, but um, Bob Baffert. And it's so funny because I saw him in Dubai in the early morning workouts. And I said, I was on the same plane with you. And I woke up out of deep sleep and you were taking a stroll. (laughs) And he's like, he's like, you probably, you probably woke. He said something funny, something about like, maybe I woke up in a nightmare or something. (laughs) And I was like, so that was, that was pretty funny because, you know, obviously he's so recognizable, even when you're waking up in the middle of the night on an Emirates flight. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. You know, when you, when you get like something like that and then you just realize who it is and then they do something that you don't expect or say something that they don't, that you don't expect. It's always pretty funny. (laughs) So I know that, that, that experience too well. Yeah. So Melanie, thank you. Thank you so much for joining me. You can follow Melanie on Twitter at skim the rail and she posts a lot of horse racing pictures. Mm -hmm. She just, (laughs) <laughs> I did. She just posted her <laughs> Justify picture from two years ago when she was at the Belmont Stakes. So be sure to check that out, and be sure to check out all these other pictures. You know, with 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 the world that it, with the world as it is right now, it's it's very terrible to see all this stuff. And we're slowly getting back to normal. But but if you take a look at some of her pictures, I, I'm I'm sure that'll bring a lot of a lot of joy into your lives, right? Oh, thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> you know, you know, as photographers. You know, as photographers for the sport of horse racing, you know, that's what we're here for. We're here to share our experiences, especially with um, race fans who can't go out to the track. But it's just that personal touch, you know. It's about telling stories, and that's what we're here for. We love what we do, and um, it's just always so fun. It's always the best part, I think, of of you know being a photographer in this sport is just sharing with the race fans so i love it oh yeah we we really appreciate your work so thank you so much and thank you so much for joining the show has been it's been a really big honor and a pleasure to have you. oh thank you so much justify is the leader but it's just a half length advantage here vino rosso comes under a ride mike smith is not as justified to go just yet justify a length lead here as they come to the top of the stretch Vino Rosso is second, Huffberg comes on the scene, and Gronkowski has cut the corner, and they're into the stretch, and Justify comes roaring home to a raucous Belmont Park with one furlong to run. Gronkowski and Huffberg trying to run him down. Vino Rosso is fourth, a 16th to go. Justify is still there. Justify from Gronkowski. He's just perfect, and now he's just immortal! Justify is the 13th Triple Crown winner! That was Larry Colmus with the call there from Belmont Park with Justify winning not only the Belmont Stakes, but the Kentucky Derby and the Preakness, the Triple Crown. And it would actually be really interesting this year if a horse wins the Triple Crown because the Belmont Stakes is first and usually the Belmont Stakes is last. So, you know, Belmont is always the true test of a champion in the last leg of the Triple Crown, but it's going to be the first leg of the Triple Crown this year. And the way things have been going, I mean, it's 2020. We only could take what we could get, right? Join us this 
Friday, where we will have track announcer Matt Dinnerman, Nick Rogers, who runs the NorCal Racing News Twitter, and Melanie Martinez will be coming back, and we will be previewing the San Francisco Mile on closing day this Sunday at Golden Gate Fields. Be a really, really interesting race. So be sure to check it out and check out our picks and see what we got for you guys this Friday. I'd like to thank Melanie Martinez for joining me. Make sure you follow her on Twitter at SkimTheRail. And be sure to tune in this Friday. With that being said, see you next time. Be safe. Have all your toilet paper and hand sanitizer. And I forgot the Clorox wipes last week, so have the Clorox wipes too. And until next time, and away they joe.